Morning! Malia, you're awake? I'm getting change right now, but when I'm ready, I'll go pick you up with my car. I'm planning to be there around nine. Are you almost ready? Millie? It's already eight! Are you getting ready? Please tell me you're awake. I already told my parents that we're coming and they're expecting us at 11. My parents' house is a two hour drive away, so you've got to wake up and get ready soon or we won't make it in time. Can you please reply to my messages if you're awake? We're gonna be late if you don't wake up soon. Millie, are you okay? I'm really worried. Did something happen? Uh, I'm awake. Oh, thank God! I was trying to think that something had happened to you. You're up! Are you almost ready? I guess that's why you couldn't answer my messages. I'll be picking you up at 9, so if you can get ready by then, that'll be great. Oh, and please don't go back to bed. Hey, I'm waiting outside. I've been ringing the doorbell, but there's no answer. You're awake, aren't you? Can you open the door? Millie, you okay? Why can't you come to the door? Hey, Millie! You haven't collapsed or anything, have you? Please just tell me you're okay. Shut up! Can't you stop messaging me for one second? Why are you so pissed off? I'm the one that should be angry. What do you want? What do you mean, what do I want? Did you forget what today is? Have you forgotten that we have plans today? Really important ones? We're supposed to go see my parents. So what? Why should I care? My notifications won't shut up until you stop messaging me. Can you give me some peace? I want to sleep. What? Are you being serious? You don't care about meeting my parents? I'm waiting outside your apartment and the car is ready to go. Can you just open up? Let me inside at least. I can help you get ready. No, I don't want to. I'm sleeping, and I don't want to wake up yet, so leave me alone. I'm not letting you in either. I'll call you when I wake up, so can you stop with the messages? The pings are driving me crazy. What do you want from me? All I want is to relax and spend my precious Sunday sleeping in, but you're ruining it. Why do you have to send so many messages? I told you we're supposed to go see my parents today. We decided this weeks ago. Ugh, and? That's supposed to mean something to me? I'll call you later when I feel like it. Right now, I'm sleepy, and I don't want to think or do anything. I just want to sleep. You can't be serious. You're gonna cancel meeting my parents on the day at last minute because you're sleepy? We're supposed to go see your parents this evening too. Do you mean that you want to cancel both plans? Oh. My. God. Shut. Up! I've had enough of your messages! I want to sleep. Can you leave me alone? I said stop. I've had enough. I'm going to turn off my phone, so just wait until I wake up. I'll call you when I do. You're kidding, right? You're turning off your phone? Seriously, you're gonna shut me out. We're supposed to announce our engagement today. I thought it was an important day for both of us. Fine, forget about it. Good morning. I'm sorry about earlier. I saw all your messages. You're not still mad, are you? Forget about it. I guess you are still mad. Yeah, I'm still mad. Did you read our conversation when you woke up? What you said to me? I just read everything. I'm really sorry, Sean. I only just realized that we were supposed to go to your parents' house. I was really confused earlier because I was so tired. I didn't think that was today. I'm sorry. The truth is, I don't feel well and I was just trying to sleep it off. You felt ill? Why didn't you just say so earlier? What happened? I have really bad fatigue. My entire body feels really heavy. My head hurts too, like I've got a migraine or something. Plus, I think I've got a fever. I was really out of it this morning, like I was half asleep or something. Everything just felt really bad, and my instinct was to sleep through it. I didn't understand what was going on, and I think I said some horrible stuff. I don't remember typing it at all, but I saw what I sent you, and I swear I didn't mean any of it. I wasn't myself. Sorry, really sorry. Do you think we can make it if we go to your parents' place now? No, it's too late. Oh, that's a shame. 
But we're still going to see my parents and tell them, right? We told them that we'd visit in the evening, so we still have plenty of time to get ready and see them. And they live really close by, so there's no rush either. We ended up having to cancel last minute on my parents. You realize that, don't you? But you still want to tell your parents about our engagement? How was that fair? Hey, I wanted to meet your parents and let them know in person. It's not like I did it on purpose. But if we're not going to make it in time to see them, then we might as well see my parents. We still have a few hours, so I thought that there was no problem. Forget it. You don't have to meet my parents, so we don't have to tell your parents about our engagement. What? What are you talking about? I already called your parents and let them know that we won't be going. They're not expecting us anymore. What? You cancelled? Why would you do that? You're horrible! My parents were looking forward to seeing us. You haven't seen them in ages. They must be really disappointed. Haven't you got any messages from them? If you have, you better read them before you say anything else. It's not me that they're disappointed in. What do you mean? I think I got a few calls from them both, but... I saw that you had sent me a lot of messages too, so I decided to reply to you first. You should be happy that I prioritized you over my parents. I thought I should apologize properly for what I said and everything. Yeah, sure, that makes me so happy. You should call your parents, find out why they were trying so hard to get a hold of you, and see what they have to say. I'm sick of talking to you. Oh, don't say that. You can't be angry about me not meeting your parents forever. Give me a break. That's not all I'm angry about. If it was just that, I might have already forgiven you. How about you tell the truth? The truth? What are you talking about? I haven't lied to you. And tell me why you couldn't wake up on time this morning. Why you reacted like you did when I told you I was waiting outside. You should have known that we had important plans today. We've been talking about it for weeks. So why did you cancel on me? What were you doing last night? I'm sorry. I guess you already figured it out. The truth is... I went out for a few drinks with some friends last night. They invited me out right after work and I thought I would just have one drink and come straight home. But I ended up drinking a bit too much. This morning I had a massive hangover, like the worst. I was really unwell. I wasn't lying about the fatigue and migraine and stuff. I already had an alarm set on my phone, but I couldn't wake up straight away. But I'm okay now. I drank a lot of water and ate breakfast. Took some paracetamol, so I'm feeling great. I'm completely awake. Yeah, I thought so. You might not have read back that far, but you sent me some messages last night when you were out. You must have already been pretty drunk when you send them if you don't remember. I don't remember sending anything at all. Yeah, and they didn't make much sense anyway. So I thought you might be drunk. But I wanted to believe that you wouldn't do that and that you were just in a rush or that there was a reason why your messages were all over the place. I never thought you would actually go out drinking the night before we were supposed to meet my parents. I don't understand how you could be so selfish. I said I'm sorry, you don't have to rub it in. I told you I didn't mean to drink that much. I was only going to stick around for one drink. I was aware of our plans last night and I didn't forget about them. It just slipped my mind after a few drinks. I even told my friends that I wouldn't stay for long, but it just got out of hand. I promise I would never do something like that on purpose. Yeah, yeah, sure you wouldn't. You weren't yourself, right? Don't be like that. Plus, there was a friend that I hadn't seen in ages. I couldn't say no. I didn't know when I'd next be able to meet them, so I wanted to stick around as long as possible. I told you, forget about it. You don't have to make excuses anymore. I understand why you couldn't wake up this morning and why we couldn't go see my parents. Will you forgive me? I'm really sorry. No, you don't have to make excuses anymore because there's no point. I'm canceling our engagement. What? You're joking, right? Please don't joke about something so serious. Sean, please pick up the phone. I can explain. I'm not answering anything. I called you over and over this morning, but you wouldn't pick up when I needed you to. Why should I? You're the one that shut me out by not answering your door and by turning off your phone. Well, yeah, but there was a reason for all that. I didn't feel well. 
I'm awake now. I can talk. You can't do this to me. Please, answer the phone. I want us to talk about this properly. You can't decide to cancel our engagement without me. I can't accept that. I can't just give up. Why would you even say that? I don't understand what's gotten into you. What's wrong with you? That's what I want to say. Everything you just said back at you. This morning, you were supposed to be getting ready to meet my parents and tell them that we're getting married, but instead, you prioritized going out to get drinks with your friends last night. So you ended up getting a hangover and canceling our plans. Yeah, if you put it like that, it sounds horrible, but I didn't mean to. I didn't prioritize anything. Exactly. You should have thought about what a big day this was supposed to be for us and avoided having any alcohol. Or you could have even told your friends that you couldn't go. That's what I would have done. I've been doing a lot to prepare for seeing your parents, practicing what I'll say, preparing my clothes, choosing gifts. I've been thinking about nothing but this day for the past week. I had everything ready this morning and was ready to ask them for their blessings this evening. But what were you doing the night before? You were out getting drunk. I just had a few drinks. What's the big deal? Are you seriously still angry about that? I'm not going to be able to go out to drink when we're married, so why can't I enjoy a few nights out while I'm still a bachelorette? Is this how you're going to be every time I go out with my friends? Hey, I never said that you couldn't go out and have drinks with your friends. You can still do that once you're married too. Don't make it out like I'm the bad guy that's being suffocating. What I'm asking is why he would go out to drink the night before he was supposed to go and meet my parents and tell them about our engagement. There's a limit to how irresponsible you can be. I understand a few drinks with friends, but if you got drunk and had a hangover this morning, that tells me that you had a few more drinks and you're letting on. And let me remind you because you seem to be conveniently forgetting it, but we planned this weeks ago. You don't have to talk to me like that. I'm not a kid. You don't have to lecture me. I just had a bit too much fun, and I ended up drinking more than I meant to. That's all. I don't get what the fuss is about. Yeah, that's all? I can't take your lies anymore. I might have been able to forgive you if it was just getting drunk and hung over. And if you'd been honest about why you couldn't get up this morning. If you're a little more apologetic and guilty about what you had done but I can't carry a woman that would bring a guy home and sleep with him the night before she was supposed to meet my parents. I can't do it. I can't trust you anymore. What? What are you talking about? What guy? That's what I want to ask. Who is he? Why are you still trying to hide it from me? You went out to drink last night and got drunk with your friends and went home, but you obviously weren't alone. That's why you reacted so badly when I was messaging you this morning and why you asked me to leave you alone. What? How did you know? I thought you might wake up and come out if I waited a little longer. I was outside your apartment for about an hour, in my car. I thought that we might be able to make it in time for lunch at my parents if I waited, and it would be quicker than going home and having to pick you up if you did wake up. My parents wouldn't have minded if we were an hour late, if we explained and apologized properly. But you didn't come out! Instead, I saw a guy come out of your apartment. Why would you do that? You were still outside? You were watching us? Yeah, I saw you both. You didn't even bother to check if I was still around. You weren't thinking about me at all. But I saw you kiss him when he left. I couldn't believe it. I thought I was seeing things. I thought I must have been looking at the wrong door, but it was you. I haven't done anything like that. You were seeing things. I would never do anything like that. Please, Sean, just answer the phone. No, I'm not answering your phone calls anymore. I don't have anything else to say to you. I'm done with you. And nothing you can say can change my mind. I'm canceling our engagement. And of course, I'm breaking up with you. I don't want you contacting me ever again. What are you talking about? You can't be serious. We were going to start planning the wedding as soon as we let our parents know. I've already began looking at dresses. You tricked me. I thought you loved me. You're betraying me. Are you an idiot? You're the one that betrayed me. I thought that you loved me, but you slept with another guy. I'm sorry. 
I heard from a friend that my ex-boyfriend was in the area for the first time in a while, and we all decided to go out to have drinks. We all got really excited talking about stuff that happened in the past, and I ended up having too many drinks. To be honest, I don't remember what happened after all the talking. So I guess one thing just led to another and I ended up going home with my ex. So it's not cheating. I'm not having an affair. You have to believe me. No matter what you say, I can't trust you. All you've done is lie to me today. And if you're telling me that you can't stop yourself from having drinks when you really have to beat somewhere the next day, and that you can't admit to what you've done while drunk, then I can't marry you. I don't want to marry someone I can't trust. Please don't say that. It's just a one-time thing. It doesn't mean anything. It's ironic. Maybe I should say that it's perfect timing. On the day that we were supposed to announce our engagement, I had to announce that we were splitting up instead. I never imagined that today would turn out like this, but I guess it's better that I found out about everything now rather than once we're married. That's the only way I can look at this positively. No, Sean, don't do this to me. I already turned 31 this year. I thought I would already be married and have kids by now. I want to marry you. I don't love my ex. It was just a mistake. I've already told my boss that I'm resigning because I'm getting married. What am I supposed to do for work? Then you'll have to tell them that you're not resigning and ask for your old job back. Or you have to find another job. But that has nothing to do with me anymore. I don't want to marry you. I don't want to have anything to do with you. Sean, listen to me. I only kissed him at the door because I was saying goodbye to him. Because I knew that I was going to marry you. It meant nothing. I only love you. It was just for one night. We're not in love, but I love you, and I want to marry you. I don't want anyone else. I don't care. I've already told my parents and contacted yours to tell them that we're going to tell them that we got engaged, but that we've broken up. I've made it clear that we're not getting back together. What? You called my parents? What did you tell them? Did you tell them about what happened last night? Of course I did. I told them we wouldn't be able to make it for tonight's dinner. And naturally, they asked why. They wondered why they couldn't get through to you and wanted an explanation, so I told them everything. They were bound to find out about the engagement sooner or later. Why would you do that? We haven't decided anything yet. I haven't given up, and I told you it was just a fling. Call them right now and tell them that it was all a misunderstanding. They're your parents. You explain everything to them yourself. And it's not a misunderstanding. I saw you. You can't deny it. You were cheating on me. And after everything that's happened today, I'm not interested in getting back together with you. I've already met your parents before, so I wanted to tell them that we had broken up properly and thank them for how well they had treated me up until now, instead of just disappearing on them. It was just a phone call, but I'm glad I had the chance to speak to them one last time. They really are good people. It's a shame you've disappointed them this much. But we haven't broken up. I haven't accepted any of that yet. I want to get married, and I want to marry you. If you really wanted to get married that much, then maybe you should have acted more like it. Maybe you should have taken today a little more seriously and been more responsible when you went out last night. Maybe if you hadn't lied to me over and over. And maybe you should have thought about me before you slept with your ex-boyfriend. I'm sorry. I'll never do anything like this ever again. If you can just forgive me this one time, please? It's too late. I already saw you cheating on me. I can't live with that. I can't stop thinking about it. The only thing I can do is try and forget about you. My parents are really disappointed that they never even got the chance to meet you. But that might have been for the best. I don't want to have anything to do with you. I just had too much to drink last night. There were no feelings involved. I won't ever drink ever again. And this won't happen ever again, I swear. Enough, forget it. Forget about me and I'll forget about you. Drink however much you want, and go out with any guy you like. Good for you. You can enjoy your nights out as a single woman. What you do has nothing to do with me anymore. But if you really do want to get married in the future, I suggest you don't make the same mistakes. 
and make an effort to prioritize important dates with a guy that is crazy enough to marry a self-centered woman like you. Maybe he'll stick around. Don't call me ever again. Goodbye. After having their engagement canceled on her, Millie tried to contact Sean several times by messaging him and calling him, but nothing got through. It looked like he had already blocked her on all social media they were connected on, and there was no response to anything she sent him. Once she finally realized how serious he was about not wanting to talk to her ever again, she checked the notifications she had from her parents. She read all their messages and knew they weren't happy, but she worked up the courage to call them back. Her father answered the phone, and he was furious that she had done something so hurtful. She ended up being shouted at by her parents for her childish behavior, and in the end, was told that she was disowned. Because of her thoughtless actions, a day that was supposed to be the first of many happy ones became a reminder of her engagement being cancelled instead. As for her job, Millie contacted the company she used to work at to ask for her job back, but they had already found a replacement for her and didn't have any space to hire her. She had to accept that she had lost her job, her family, and her fiancé, and had to go looking for a new start at a new job. But she didn't have much experience, or a degree, so she was finding it tough to pass the job interview stage. She had lost a lot of things in one go, and only started regretting her actions after it was too late. But apparently, that's what helped her to stop drinking, and she swore that she would never drink ever again. Hey Megan, how are you doing? It's been a long time since we last spoke. I was just wondering if you were well. Carl? Yeah, it really has been a long time. I'm fine. I'm doing much better without you. So, what do you want? You've got a lot of nerve talking to me after everything you did. It's already been months since you left, and you suddenly want to have a chat? Just to let you know, I'm not interested in catching up or making up with you. I just want to know how you've been recently, that's all. You don't have to be so defensive. You must be feeling lonely living all by yourself in that house without me, right? You can't have completely forgotten about me already. Lonely? <laughs> that's a great joke. I stopped feeling lonely three seconds after you walked out the door. Honestly, I felt more angry and sad. But it's already been months. I'm not sad about you anymore. I'm disappointed and still angry enough to not want to have anything to do with you. But otherwise, I'm doing really well. I'm grateful to our lawyers that our divorce went so smoothly and that it was all over so quickly. Thanks to that, I didn't have to meet you in court as often as I expected. Alright, I'm kind of shocked. I thought that you would still feel something for me. I mean, it's only been six months, you know? You can't have gotten over me that quickly, can you? I kind of feel like we've really grown apart. I feel like there's a massive distance between us now. We used to be husband and wife, and we were in love. And we lived together, ate dinner together. But look at us now. We're so far apart. Huh? What's your point, Carl? I told you that I'm not interested in talking to you. That includes getting nostalgic about how things used to be. And what do you expect? I don't know where you're living right now, but of course we're far apart, physically and emotionally. We're divorced, and we're never going to see each other ever again. We're complete strangers now. You're no different to any stranger I pass on the street. The difference between you and a stranger is that I would rather have a conversation with any random person rather than speak with you. Megan, don't be so cold. You don't have to be so harsh towards me. I used to be your husband. The key words are used to be. That was until you won the lottery and suddenly started acting like you were better than me. Yeah, it was a lot of money, but I don't understand how you could have changed so much in just a matter of hours. You threw me away on the day you won that lottery, and you're telling me that I'm being cold? I don't have anything to say, and I have no intention of being kind to an idiot like you. Trust me, I feel really bad for what I did. I know I've been an idiot. That's why I messaged you today. I did something terrible, but I wish you could just talk to me. I'm really sorry. I hurt your feelings. 
I thought about what I did since then, and I've reflected on my actions. I regret ever doing something so stupid and impulsive. I should have been more rational when we were talking about the winnings, and shouldn't have reacted like that. No, I should have listened to what you said more carefully. You were being so reasonable about what to do with the money, and I wrecked our marriage because I was so selfish. I regret all of that and more. The fact that you're saying that now means you're in the situation I predicted you'd end up in all those months ago, right? I hate to rub it in, but I told you so. I can't believe it took you so long to realize how wrong you were. I could see it coming from a mile away, but I guess you just had to experience it firsthand. I know, I was stupid and I'm sorry. I finally realized that you warned me that this would happen for my sake. I was too blinded by the money to understand that you were only thinking of me. I wish I could go back in time and change everything, but I can't. I was so stupid and I regret it all. Yeah, you were so stupid. And horrible, too. I get that winning three million dollars was a big deal. It's a lot of money and it's not every day that such a large amount of money comes into hand. I think anyone would panic and get big ideas about how they want to spend their newfound fortune. I was pretty shocked too, and I won't lie, I thought about all the amazing things we could buy too. But the way you reacted was abnormal. Once you knew you had the winning ticket, nothing else mattered to you. You only cared about yourself and the money. I wasn't thinking straight. It was like I was in a dream state. I couldn't help myself. All I suggested was that we should be sensible with how we spend the money and save as much of it as possible for our future together. And keep some money aside in case we had children. I wasn't planning on taking anything from you, and I made no mention of spending it all by myself. But you started raving shouting at me that it was your money and that I wasn't allowed to touch a single cent, that it was for you to use the way you wanted to spend it. I never intended to take anything from you, but that's what you assumed. And suddenly, poof, like magic, you were gone, along with the money. You didn't even answer my messages until you sent me the divorce papers. And even then, you only replied that you would give me alimony if I signed the papers. We had been together for three years, but all that went down the drain when you got that money and turned into a completely different man. For weeks, I wondered what those three years were, if they meant nothing to you. After I stopped being sad, I realized that I had already wasted three years, and that I shouldn't waste any more time trying to make sense of what you did. I know. I was completely at fault, but it was three million dollars. Neither of us had even had a tenth of that amount in our banks at one time. You can imagine why I went so crazy, can't you? Yeah, it's a lot of money, but that doesn't excuse your behavior. You ranted at me that my parents might come and beg you for money because they're so poor and that you couldn't trust anyone anymore. You were insulting me and my family with every word you said. Because you had all this money, you had this ridiculous idea that you were better than all of us. I never knew you could be so hurtful and obnoxious, and I was shocked that you could change so easily because of some money. I don't know what got into me. I don't really know why I said any of that. I didn't mean it, you know that, don't you? I regret everything I did and said after that. I wish I could take it all back. Really? It sounded like you meant it at the time. Don't try and run away from what you did. It's way too late for you to start begging me for forgiveness. I couldn't care any less about how guilty you feel. Your feeling bad isn't going to change anything. Anyway, what do you want? Let's get this over with. What are you talking about? There's a reason why you messaged me today, isn't there? I know you didn't just message me so that you could apologize. No, I really was worried about you. I wanted to show you that it changed and felt bad about what I did. I guess I also wanted to find out what you did with the money I gave you when we divorced. I was just curious about how you spent it, that's all. Money? That's what you're interested in? You're talking about the lump sum of money you gave me, right? 
You chose to give me that money instead of sending me regular payments of alimony because you didn't want to risk having to send me alimony payments for the rest of your life, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that money. I gave you $200,000, didn't I? Yeah, you did. What about it? What did you do with it? It's my money, so what does it matter what I did with it? I don't think it's any of your business how I spent it. It's not like you set any conditions for how I spend it when the amount was decided in court. Yeah, but it was my money to begin with. I think I have a right to know what you've done with it and decide what you do with it regardless of what was decided in court. And if you have any left, I was wondering if you could uh, return it. <laughs> Since you're so smart when it comes to money, I was hoping you still have a lot left. No way. You can't seriously be asking for it back. Of course I'm not giving it back. It may have been yours when you had it, but it became mine when you paid it to me as compensation. Do you understand the meaning of the word compensate? You're the one that suddenly asked for a divorce, so I was owed alimony. But you didn't want to pay that, and I didn't want to keep on having to meet you in court, so I settled for that money you gave me. I don't have any obligation to return that money to you. That money was owed to me, and it's mine. Yeah, it was compensation, but I only gave you a lot of money because I had a lot of my own money at the time. But I'm having trouble right now, and I need some money. It would be great if you could give it back. But to be honest, it's my money, so I shouldn't even have to ask you. What do you mean by trouble? I got married after we divorced. Oh, so the rumors I heard were true. Congratulations! I heard that you married someone. So, how did that turn out for you? She ran away with all of my money. I never should have married her. What? All of it? Yeah, can you believe it? It was $3 million, so I thought that I didn't have to worry about anything for the rest of my life. I thought I could live like a celebrity. So I resigned from my job and had a house built for me and my new wife. We filled it with designer furniture and everything. We even had a pool put in. We were living the perfect life together until one day she suddenly asked for a divorce. After the divorce was finalized, I realized that all of my money had been transferred to her bank account and she was gone. We were divorced. My account was empty. She had disappeared. She even told her lawyers that I had been cheating on her, even though I'd never done anything like that. I had already lost one million in compensation during the divorce for an affair I never had, and she took the rest of what was in my account without me even realizing it. I don't know where she is, but the last I heard, she was living in a penthouse apartment abroad. You said you'd never cheated on her, but she managed to win the court case? That must have meant that she had enough evidence to argue for compensation. You can try and act the victim all you like, but in the end, it was your own fault. Your own, irresponsible actions brought all this upon you. Yeah, fine. She got pictures of me with another woman. But how is it fair that she gets one million in the divorce? It's my money! So you did cheat on her after all. You're a pathetic excuse for a husband. Yeah, all right. Say all you like. Anyway, that's not my point. I've explained why I need the money. Can you give me back the money I gave you? I need it right now. My ex-wife got the house and the divorce too, so I don't have anywhere to live. She's not even using it. She's abroad. But the woman bought it out for sale. I was kicked out of my own house so that she could sell it and take more money from me. Megan, you're still living at the same place we lived in when we were married, right? Can we live together again? Excuse me? Are you asking if you can move in with me? Let's just forget about everything that happened in the past and live together. I want us to start over. I'll be a better husband this time. Even if we don't have the three million dollars, I know that we can be happy together. I still love you. We can work through this together. I swear I'll make you happy this time. No way. You must be out of your mind. It's disgusting how you think you can slither your way back into my life again. 
We're over. And we are never getting back together. Ever. The divorce was finalized, and I'm free of you. I don't have anything else to say to you. Plus, I've already moved out of that house and sold it. I'm living somewhere else. Well, how do you move down? Where are you living now? Are you, are you still close by? I'm not giving you the details of where, but I'll tell you a bit about it. Thanks to the compensation I got from you, I was able to buy some pretty reasonable shares. I had to be patient, but it went really well. I managed to earn a profit from it. You bought shares? I never knew that you knew how to do that kind of stuff. Why didn't you tell me when I had the three million? We could have made an even bigger fortune. Don't be stupid, Carl. It was beginner's luck. And of course I didn't put the entire 200000 you gave me into buying shares. I invested a reasonable amount and got lucky. Once I made a decent profit, I backed out and put all the money I made into a savings account. Right now, I'm working full-time and using the money I've saved up to live a little more luxuriously. I buy organic and I spend money on the things I love and enjoy. But I still have money saved for a rainy day. Thanks to that, I was able to get a penthouse apartment in a really lovely area. It's not filled with designer furniture, so it might not be as fancy as the place you had, but it's home. I realized early on that it was dangerous to impulse buy when you have so much money at your fingertips, so I try and only buy what I need or really want. I'm doing really well at work too, so everything's going perfectly. Smooth sailing. I was being serious when I said I was doing better without you. Honestly, I'm grateful that you won that lottery, and I'm glad you told me you wanted to divorce when you did. If you hadn't, I would have been stuck with you. You living in a penthouse apartment too? You kidding? I never imagined that you would end up being so successful. It's only been six months since we divorced. But that's my money you're standing on. You and my other exes, you're both living in luxury thanks to me. It's money we were owed. I don't know what to say about that money she took from your account, except maybe that it was just karma coming around to bite you in the ass. By the way, how much money do you have saved right now? About $200. <laughs> you can't be serious. You're turning 36 this year, aren't you? You don't have a place to live, you're unemployed, and you only have $200 saved? I would sympathize, but I know that it's all your own fault. What are you planning to do from now on? I was just kicked out of my own house last week. I haven't been able to find a job yet. I thought that I could sell the house, but my other ex got it in the divorce. So I don't have anything worth selling. I already failed one job interview, and I didn't know what else to do, so I decided to message you, hoping that you could help me. What about your parents? Why don't you ask them to let you stay with them while you find a place of your own? And a job. Some idiots in my parents' neighborhood found out that I won three million and started harassing my parents. Most of it was really childish, you know? Throwing toilet paper around, but they were getting death threats in the mail and stuff too. Some magazines were asking for interviews non-stop. My parents ended up moving away and they cut ties with me. I need your help, Megan. I don't have anyone else. You're the idiot, Carl. That's the main reason why I warned you about bragging about your win to everyone. Just because you won three million doesn't make you better than everyone else. I told you that you shouldn't get carried away, didn't I? But you didn't listen, and you lost a lot of friends and made a lot of enemies in the process. I know, I regret a lot of what I did. I regret not listening to you the most because none of this would have happened if I just did as you said. That's why I want to get back together again. I need you to keep me in check. Sorry, Carl, but I'm not interested in being your babysitter. We're never getting back together. There's not even a 1% chance of it happening. Why not? I'm not asking you to be my babysitter. I want us to be husband and wife again. We didn't get divorced because we stopped loving each other. You still love me, don't you? We can get back together again. You must be joking. You're the only one that thinks we still have a chance. I don't know whether you do actually still have any feelings for me, 
or if you're just saying all this because you want money. But either way, it doesn't change how I feel about you. The second you said you wanted a divorce, I hated you from the bottom of my heart. You chose your money over me. You made that really clear during the divorce. Now, I'm indifferent. I couldn't care less about what happens to you. Don't say that. That hurts more than being told you hate me. Please, I'm begging you for help. Could you at least have some pity for me? I need your help. We used to be married, remember? We spent three years living in the same house. We can forget about everything and start new together. No thanks. You're the one that asked for a divorce despite the three years we spent together. So don't bring it up as a reason to get back together. Then could you at least lend me some money? That's all I asked for. You said you've got money saved up. You can spare some, can't you? You made that money because of the money I gave you. You owe me. Come on. I don't even have a place to live. I'm begging you, Megan. Help me out. I don't have anyone else to turn to. I don't have any obligation to help you. You won $3 million and you told me that you didn't trust me with your money, saying that I might waste it all on shopping sprees. Only God knows where you got the idea that I would do that. You said you wanted to spend it how you liked and demanded I sign the divorce papers. And you left, taking all your money with you. Well, I'm telling you now that I'm free to spend the money I have however I like, including the money I got as compensation. I don't have a single cent to give you. Then what am I supposed to do? The reason why you have so much money right now is because of the money I gave you. Don't you feel any gratitude towards me? You could at least give something back as thanks. It's not fair that you're living in a penthouse apartment and have money saved and still have a job. I don't have anything. How can I accept that? Why should I care whether you accept it or not? You were living in a house filled with designer items and lived the celebrity life for a few months, didn't you? I hear that your new wife was quite beautiful, too. You didn't have to work and spent your days relaxing, sleeping, and eating, I guess. Do you remember what you told me when you left me? You said that you were rich and that you deserved better than a boring old woman like me, even though we're the same age. Even though you would be just as boring without that money. You said that you were going to find someone younger and prettier. Someone that would suit your newfound fortune. Did you think I would forget that you said that? I don't remember saying anything like that at all. But I'm sorry. I really am. I wasn't myself then. I didn't think that at all. I've never thought anything like that. You didn't think I was being serious, did you? Ever since we got divorced, I've been thinking about you. I just want to get back together. I realized after spending a few months living with my other wife that the only one for me was you. I need you, Megan. Really? You need me? Thanks. I'm so flattered. Is that all you have to say? I'm begging you here. Just listen to what I have to say, please. Can't you be a little interested just for a minute? I just need a thousand dollars, that's all. I won't ask for any more than that. I'll pay you back. Megan, are you listening to me? If I have a thousand dollars, I can buy lottery tickets again. I'll win a fortune, and I'll be able to give you all the money you want. You've got to be kidding. I guess it's true that money drives people crazy. You hear a lot in the news about how people spent their winnings on something ridiculous, but I think you've outdone all of them. I've never heard of anyone that had to beg their ex for money to bet their chances on a second win. If you think that's the way out of your problems, then there's no helping you. What do you mean there's no helping me? You can help me. I just need money. We can fix everything if we get back together and help each other through this. I want to start over with you. I love you. Don't you love me back? Don't you feel sorry for me? You don't love me. You just love that I have something you don't. My money. And I don't need anything to be fixed. My life is great as it is now. It's not perfect yet, but you're not the one that will make it perfect. 
You need to learn to fix your behavior and fix your problems yourself. Don't bother me anymore. I do love you. I only have you. Give me back my money. It's not yours. I made this money because of the decisions I made. You lost yours because of the decisions you didn't think through. Don't ever message or call me ever again. You asshole. Let me give you the same parting gift you gave me. I deserve better than a boring old man like you. I'm going to find someone that loves me and live happily ever after without you. I'll be blocking your number, so don't try and contact me. Goodbye. <laughs> after that, Megan blocked Carl's number and blocked him on all of the social networking they were connected on. Megan was able to forget about Carl pretty easily and was enjoying her peaceful life without him. She was living her ideal life, focusing on her career and coming home to the apartment she had taken care to furnish with things she loved. Carl, however, had used up what remained of his savings and still couldn't pass an interview because of his obvious lack of work ethic. He didn't change his attitude and blamed the interviewers for not passing him. As a result, he started borrowing money from loan sharks, and with that money, he began gambling at his nearest casino. Of course, it wasn't that easy to make a fortune, and the gambling only made his debt bigger and bigger. He was digging his own grave, but he still didn't change his attitude. After realizing how big his debt had gotten, he became desperate, but instead of trying for another job interview, he tried to steal money from a convenience store and was caught by the police. Megan found out about Carl's arrest on the morning news, but was too indifferent to care. She only remarked that money really does drive people crazy, and went on about her day as she usually would. Carl was just another stranger to her now. Hey, Christine! How was the meeting today? I don't think it went very well, to be honest. What? Oh, that's too bad! Does that mean your idea wasn't approved? You could say that, yeah. I'm very sorry. I had a front row seat on how you worked hard preparing for the meeting, too. I'm also shocked, honey. The time and dedication you put in the preparations were impressive. I guess that's true, isn't it? It took me probably six months. I was pretty convinced that this project would be approved after all. You've been saying that a lot these days. The past few weeks, you're staying at work until much later, burning the midnight oil night after night. You were really doing so well. I have nothing but respect for you, Christine. You're the hope among our peers, and I see you getting promoted sometime soon. It's a shame about what happened this time. But this is you we're talking about. You'll get another chance. I'm sure of it. Keep moving forward. Thank you, Ellen. You know what? Let's go out for a drink. My treat. And my reward to you for your hard work. How about it? I'm sorry, but I think I'll pass on this one. Oh, are you sure? Well, no matter. I can go any time. Just say the word, okay? You're so kind, Ellen, you know that? What? <laughs> oh, pish posh, honey. <laughs> You're my friend, after all. Oh, Christine, we're the only two remaining non-married women in our department. We gotta stick together and help each other out. That's true. The other girls we used to work with all have either stopped working or they were transferred someplace else. We've been doing our best together, you and I. Let's keep at it. I know we'll get to great heights together. Yeah, I'd be pretty happy if that were really how you felt. What? <laughs> what was that? I don't really understand what you mean, honey. This is exactly how I feel. But it isn't, is it? I know, Ellen. I know everything. I know that you submitted a project idea exactly the same as mine before I did, and that it was approved. Is that true? I didn't think your idea was the same as mine. Don't tell me you're trying to take the glory here. Glory to what? I knew you were really busy with your idea. I just 
couldn't tell you the news. In truth, that project was my idea, and it was approved long before you had your meeting. It was pretty much set in stone, but then they decided to have a look at yours, too, just in case. Then you knew, didn't you? What? While I was working on it, you stayed by my side, seeming like you're cheering me on. When in reality, you submitted an idea that you stole from me knowing it would be approved. Huh. <laughs> That's right. The presentations made everything clear that that idea was the chosen one. I'd known it was approved since yesterday. But you were never in the presentation, were you? They allowed me to present after I asked them. Because I'd come up with a really good idea, you see. I see. When did you have that brainstorm? Quite a while ago, I think. Maybe around this time last month? Stop lying. What? Last week while I was staying late at work, you were doing something at my desk, weren't you? After I'd come back from getting a few things, I called to you when I saw you. But you sounded panicked and quickly left for home. But that was my desk, wasn't it? Hmm, who knows? I sure don't. The fact that you came up with exactly the same idea as mine, and the fact that the presentation materials were pretty much identical. Don't you think that's a little strange? So what? Huh? I'm clearly the one more capable in this. So, what's wrong with me using your materials? Doesn't matter for the company, as long as the materials are solid enough, right? It means you stole from me, you know? Do you understand what that even means? It's not that I stole them, honey. I only borrowed them for a short time. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. You're like a walking bundle of nerves on edge. <laughs> That's not funny at all. You think you're going to get away with all the stealing and lying? <laughs> oh. In any case, my idea has been approved, so could every sore loser, like, shut the hell up? Eh? Sore loser? Yeah. What a pitiful little angry puppy you are. Oh. <laughs> my promotion's pretty much guaranteed, you know. You've been such an annoying thorn in my side, acting as though you're the best at everything. <laughs> Miss Goody Two Shoes has been pissing me off, for real. Even when you've been acting like such a good friend? We went out drinking together, often. I've never once thought of you as my true friend. I was only being your damn safety net, since everyone else also despises you. Perhaps you're the only one who's dumb enough not to notice. <laughs> yeah, I don't give a good goddamn about that. But everyone knows now. Uh? Knows about what? About how you royally screwed yourself over so much? <laughs> That's impossible. Just because your own stupid idea wasn't approved doesn't give you any justification to be jealous. I'm way more qualified in this. So don't you worry about a thing. That project was quite the biggie, so I had to periodically report its progress to our boss, you see. And also, Mr. Horton was working on this with me, so all the data was also on his computer. Huh? Uh, Mr. Horton's in another department, isn't he? Why would he be working with you? I asked for some cooperation from other departments, too. But I doubt the only other woman in my department would understand why. She just plays with her phone all day. Didn't you just say it was all a fiasco, though? Not exactly. They told me that my project had a lot of stuff to polish and that it wasn't approved yet. Then... What's going on with my idea? Our boss told me himself my idea was perfect and that it was going to be implemented. Even he thought something wasn't right about this. Your material was identical to mine, which he'd seen quite a few times before. It couldn't be a coincidence, so until he'd gotten up to date on my idea, he said he'd put the decision on hold. Uh, really? Does that mean my idea hasn't been approved? My idea, my sweet patootie? You mean my idea. Christine's idea. <laughs> Since the beginning, it was my idea. And Mr. Horton's. Oh, 
and I thought this was my chance to finally shine. I'm sorry, but it looks like I'm promoted very soon. But for some reason, you were also going for that position. But for someone who's been working here for ten whole years and never once took on a big project like this, staying on tea duty and copy career, there's no way you're getting promoted, Ellen. You're so cruel. Why? You just told me everyone despised me, but really, who is being acknowledged as a backstabbing bitch? You, Ellen. <laughs> what? But why? You're such a flirty floozy, even though you're not even young anymore, and you run off claiming you're busy with something else when some unappealing work comes your way. You play with your phone when the boss isn't around, and, her and you harass younger girls in our department. Everyone knows about this, you know? That just can't be. You've been my friend, haven't you? I thought you never thought of me as your true friend. Don't worry, honey. Even I think of you as nothing but a useless colleague. You're hurting me, Christine. Those words. It, uh, is there any way you could make this my idea instead? If people found out I stole your idea, who knows what would happen? I'm, gosh, I'm scared. I'm so sorry, Christine, darling. I'll never do it again, I, I promise. I was only a little bit envious. Sorry, but I can't do that. You went home at the usual time, but everyone stayed at work afterwards. And now they all know you stole all the data. If you do that, I'll be all alone in a good company with good people. Don't do this, please. I I'm so sorry, Christine. It's too late now. Even Boss is thinking about transferring you. Now, hold on a second. I, I want to stay in my department. I, I never told anyone this, but... I'm together with Section Manager Smith. I don't want to be separated from him. Huh? Enough of the stupid talk, Ellen. Section Manager Smith is my boyfriend. And after I get my promotion, we're going to get married. We've been together for three years, so if what you're saying is true, then we have an even bigger problem on our hands. Oh, I'm sorry, that was a lie but I was always infatuated with him. It never occurred to me that he was together with you. I always thought he was after me. It's such a shame, isn't it? You lost your love, you lost your chance to do something at your job, and your reputation among your colleagues is at an all-time low. Who's the sore loser now? I'm really sorry, Christine. Would you not spread around any nasty things about me, pretty please? I won't have any friends anymore. If you're coming back to work just because you want to play pretend to friends, maybe you should just quit, eh? It's a bother to everyone. There's nothing more annoying than a 30-year-old middle school girl. Oh, and don't forget to come to work tomorrow. Poor little angry puppy of mine. <coughs> Ellen was later summoned by her boss and was lectured for quite a long time on the subject of the theft of a colleague's data. In the end, she was given an ultimatum either get transferred to a factory in another region, or quit altogether. Ellen, with her wishes not to leave her hometown, decided to quit. Until she did quit, she suffered under the promotion of Christine. The announcement of her engagement to section manager Smith, and the cool glares from her colleagues. In the end, there was no farewell party for her, and although she'd been working for the company for close to 11 years, she was pretty much kicked out without so much as a how do you do. As of now, she's taking care of her elderly father at home, while part-time working at a convenience store. Life's full of surprises, isn't it? Hey, what time are you coming home today? Not sure, why? Um, can you grab something to eat on the way home? What? But you're a housewife, you're supposed to cook for me! I know, but our food budget is pretty tight this month. <sighs> You've been slacking recently. You gotta do better than this! You hear me? I got no money to buy groceries. You only give me $200 a month. We got two kids, you know. What? You're in charge of the money. Make it work! But... $200? I mean... Come on. You just don't know how to manage money. You're so dumb. I should have never married you. I always make a little extra. Just in case, but... Sometimes you eat dinner on your way home. 
The least you can do is tell me. Then I might be able to save some money. Wait, so this is my fault now? You're unbelievable. Don't put this on me. I'm the one busting my ass out here. But $200 a month for groceries? Come on. Heating, rent, I pay for all that. Figure it out. I'm trying, but we got two kids, you know? They should be eating more. What about the lunch you always make me? It's always leftovers from the night before. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to save money. Seriously? So you feed me leftovers? What's wrong with you? But it's the only way to make ends meet. Never complained about this before. What changed? Just figure something out. I'm sure you'll think of something. <laughs> what changed? Well, I had to quit my job after John was born. I was using my own money whenever I ran out of grocery money. And this is my fault because... Get a job! Who's gonna look after the kids, huh? And what do you use your money on anyways? I saw your pay slip the other day. You get like $3,000 a month, right? What? You looked at my pay slip? You're unbelievable! Answer my question. Uh, shut up! None of your business, okay? You wouldn't get it. You're just a housewife. I pay the rent, you know? The rent is $600. Even after the heating bill, you should have more than $1,500 left over. So what are you using all that money on? Uh, savings? Stop lying. Huh? I saw your bank account. You took out all of your savings recently. Why did you do that, huh? You did what? How dare you? What the hell is wrong with you? <sighs> and you've been working longer hours. So where is all that money going? It doesn't add up. Ah, oh, shut up! You're just a housewife. Stay out of it. Just be grateful that I give you $200 a month for groceries. Stop wasting money, okay? And stay out of my business. Fine. Just keep your mouth shut and cook. That's all you're good for. I don't even know why I married you. You're so dumb and you're a terrible cook. You're useless. Just grab something to eat on your way home, okay? There's no more food left at the house, so... Ugh, I'll try, but you better have something ready for me. Just in case. You better make me five ditches or more, or else. Hey, where are you? Where's my dinner? I told you to eat outside. Where are the kids? What are you doing? It's late! Man, I wish I could be a housewife. I work 40 hours a week, you know? And this is the thanks I get? Wait, are you cheating on me? Hey, come home right now! Shut the hell up. I'm not your maid, okay? Right back at you. Let's end this. Huh? The divorce papers. I put it next to the TV. What? Stop joking around. I'm not. Why did you fill this out? Uh, because I want a divorce. Idiot. I moved out all my stuff in case you didn't notice. What? You're so dumb. Where are you? Stop joking around. Come home and cook for me now. Screw you. What? $200 a month for groceries? Give me a break. I know you're cheating on me, asshole. What? I know everything. I hired a PI to look into it. But how dare you? You know what? Screw you. I'm leaving you. Fine by me. What? But it's the other way around. I'm leaving you. I'm done with you. What? You thought I'd beg you to take me back? <laughs> Think again. Wait, for real? You're being serious right now? Yes. I got more than enough evidence, too. I know her name and everything. I'm going to sue you both for lots of money. See you in court. What court? What are you saying? You really don't get it, do you? You cheated on me. You harassed me all these years. And $200 a month for groceries? I mean, come on. Uh, this is some kind of misunderstanding. <laughs> I'm sorry if I upset you, but I can't get a divorce. Why not? I mean... What would other people think? And I don't want to go to trial. Come on. 
All you care about is yourself. You don't care about us at all. Of course I do. No, you don't. Whatever. Just pay us a thousand dollars a month for child support. What? I can't afford that. I got bills to pay too. Just cut down on your food budget. How does $200 a month sound, LOL? It's good enough for four people, right? I'm sure you'll figure it out. I'll try to be a better husband. I'll even help out with the kids. Got anything to say about your mistress? Now is your chance to come clean. Well, I mean, it just kind of happened. You were pregnant at the time, so... I knew it. You were a piece of shit. I'm sorry. This is all my fault. Please forgive me. I guess you gotta take care of yourself from now on. What? Who's gonna cook for me? Not my problem. Figure it out. You're a grown man. Why don't you ask your mommy for help? LOL. How dare you! You're not getting away with this. I'll sue you! Oh, okay. I'm gonna sue you too, so I guess we'll see each other in court. I already got a lawyer in everything. Wait, what? Well, I'm just glad it's all over. Wait, lawyer, what are you talking about? You're gonna pay me in full, and I'm going after your girlfriend too. Good luck to both of you. Please don't tell my boss. I'll tell them everything. Too late. I already sent them a letter. They should be getting it in the mail tomorrow morning. Are you serious? Oh, and you'll never see the kids again, so... After what you did to me. And they said they never want to see you again, so... Yeah. <laughs> Man, I should have done this a long time ago. Well then, have a nice life. The next day, everyone at his workplace found out about his affair. He got transferred to some dead-end position in the middle of nowhere. He had to work day and night to pay child support every month. He was barely making ends meet. Oh well, sucks to be him.